Hey there! Welcome back to the studio for another Altberg Market Painting Session. In this episode, we'll be painting the Eccentric Apothecary, a potion purveyor designed in 3D printed by Tiny Furniture for Tabletop World's Kickstarter. By now you're likely familiar with the exciting possibilities that artificial intelligence brings to the table. In today's session, we'll harness the power of AI to generate images with unique color schemes that we can then apply to our miniature models. While you might be acquainted with Midjourney and Blue Willow, considering Midjourney no longer offers a free trial option and Blue Willow has a limited one, we'll be exploring the fascinating capabilities of Leonardo AI. Hello, I'm Emma. I'll be your narrator on this experimental voyage. We'll be utilizing three different input images and generating several prompts with different variables to explore how AI can assist us in selecting an interesting color scheme for later application on our model. To observe the impact of the input image on the final result, we'll be testing three different images of the same model. First, the bare 3D printed model. Second, the same model primed in black. And finally, we'll apply a gray zenithal primer on top of the model to enhance contrast. As mentioned in the introduction, Leonardo AI is our chosen platform, and you can find a link to their website in the video description. To get started, all you need to do is create an account by providing your email and setting up a password. This account will grant you access to various applications offered by Leonardo AI. Leonardo AI presents a comprehensive AI image generation platform. Given its free trial option, it serves as an excellent starting point for learning how to leverage AI tools for image generation. Keep in mind that our usage will be constrained by a daily credit limit of 150. However, this is more than sufficient for experimentation and familiarizing yourself with the diverse options available. In today's exploration, we'll focus on the image generation application, delving into the parameters essential for creating suitable color schemes for our model. Even if we're not experts, the results from our initial testing are quite compelling. We'll guide you through the steps to achieve a similar result. To begin, we upload a picture of our model using the Image Guidance tab. Click to select the file from your computer or use the drag and drop technique for convenience. For our example, we'll start with the unprimed version of our model. For the next step, ensure that the Image Guidance button is turned on. Next, we set the number of images we wish to generate. Determine the aspect ratio. For better results, the image we generate should have the same ratio as the original image. Afterwards, we need to craft a well-formulated prompt. An essential aspect of successfully creating an image according to your needs is the quality of the prompt. The prompt is the text that describes the task an AI should perform. In text-to-image generation, the prompt serves as the descriptive text instruction guiding the AI tool to generate an image. This command can be as straightforward as depict an eccentric apothecary, or it could be a more detailed statement encompassing context, specific instructions, and even a bit of conversation history. As first prompt, let's try the following. Depict a vivid portrayal of an apothecary in photorealistic style adorned in noble clothes of beautifully assorted colors. His face bears a beard, combed brown hair, and he's smiling, standing proudly with a potion in his hand, pay special attention to the eyes. Next, we click the Generate button. Next to the button, we can see how many credits this generation will cost. Then we go to the Generation History tab and wait for the image to generate. Just look at that! Isn't that wonderful? We generated our first inspiring color scheme. We have several credits left and can therefore generate several more images. Let's refine our prompt by adding that the beard is short. Once again, we use the image we uploaded as a guide to generate the next image. As you can see, the beard is shorter and the overall appearance and colors have changed. On the other hand, the character's posture remains the same. This is because our prompt contains information about beard appearance and posture. All other parameters will change slightly from one image to another. I love this little touch of chaos. Let's generate some more images. 
This time we'll generate four images. As you can see, the image guidance is still on. We'll also add specific colors to the prompt. Let's say we'd like the clothes to be orange, purple, and yellow. We need to write the prompt this way. Adorned in noble clothes of beautifully assorted colors. Colors, two dots, orange, comma, purple, comma, and finally yellow. Generating the four images will cost eight credits. In just a few seconds and using the same prompt, the algorithm should generate four images of characters with consistent posture and clothing adhering to the specified colors. And there you go. Isn't that impressive? There is not so much yellow color, but the color scheme is very interesting and inspiring. We'll rapidly generate four more just for the fun of it. This time, let's go with even more specific colors. Let's say we'd like to use apple green, dark pink, and aquamarine. We'll also add red as color for the potion. Again, very inspiring and except for the potion in the colors we had specified. We'll just change the end of the prompt to specify that our apothecary is holding the red potion and we'll import our second reference image. We'll try to see the impact the input image has on the result. Let's import the image of our model primed in black. The first thing we notice is that the images generated seem to be darker. Some weird things also happened. This must be due to the way the algorithm interprets the prompt. It's truly raw creativity without constraints. Now let's upload our last image and see what happens if we use the version of our model with the gray zenithal primer on top. Again, same prompt, same posture, and different results with some interesting weirdness. Remember the colors we wrote in the prompt were apple green, dark pink, and aquamarine. So that's how to use AI to help us choose a color scheme before painting our miniature models. The possibilities are endless. I invite you to do some tests yourself. You'll see it's really fun. For now, let's move on to the next step. We can download the images we prefer by selecting the Download Image button at the left of the image. As you can see, it's possible to reuse the prompt from a generated image without having to write it all over again. There are also other options that could be used if we explore further. Let's try to use this image's guidance input to upscale it. Make sure the aspect ratio is also proportional to the input image. Here, we can increase the size of the images we'll generate. However, note that this will increase the generation cost as well. We can clearly observe significant improvement, especially when considering our initial image of the resin model. These four characters, now transformed, serve as a truly inspiring outcome. All right. One more time, we'll use another image we generated, applying the same prompt that we used for its creation. Additionally, we'll include cartoon style in the prompt this time. Let's see how this adds an interesting twist. Once again, very interesting results. Let's see how it will translate into painting on our model. It is interesting to see how the imported image influences the result. We've only scratched the surface and we'll still have time to explore the possibilities that AI offers us to help us choose a color scheme. We really hope you had a good time watching the first part of the video. If you enjoyed it, giving us a thumbs up would mean a lot to us. And hey, if you haven't done so yet, feel free to click on the subscribe button. Your support is the wind that blows our sails farther on this creative journey. After a few more attempts, we crafted this one last image to inspire us in our chromatic quest.
Next stop, the rainbow of colors. All right, let's dive into painting. For this session, we'll be using Reaper Miniatures Master Series paint, but feel free to use your favorite brand. Of course, there will be slight variations in the final result due to the different appearance of the clothes and the subtle differences in colors. Nevertheless, we'll do our best to replicate the color scheme generated by Leonardo AI. As usual, we'll showcase all the colors we'll be using, and please feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions. If you're in need of quality paint or fine brushes, check out Fenris Workshop's online store. They offer an impressive selection of different brands, and you can find the link along with additional details in the video description. As you have noticed, we start by applying the base coat to create a solid foundation of opaque color. Let's talk about mixing paint colors to create the perfect hue for miniature model painting. At times, to achieve a particular shade, we need more than what comes straight out of the paint bottle. Mastering the art of mixing paint colors is a crucial skill in the world of miniature model painting, allowing us to craft a custom palette and achieve the perfect hues. Here are some key insights into the art of color mixing for miniature models. It is important to become familiar with the three primary colors. All colors can be created from red, blue, and yellow. These form the foundation for crafting an extensive array of hues. Explore the color wheel, a tool that illustrates the relationships between colors. Understanding complementary, analogous, and triadic color schemes can guide your mixing decisions. This would be a good topic for a future video. Let us know if you would like us to explore this subject further. When mixing colors, add small amounts of paint gradually to attain the desired hue. It's easier to darken a color than to lighten it, so start with a lighter shade and adjust as needed. Maintain consistency in your mixing ratios for uniformity. If you need to replicate a color, take note of the proportions of each color used. To create neutral tones such as browns and grays, mix complementary colors or use a combination of all three primary colors. Creating test samples before applying the mixed color to your model is recommended. This ensures the color matches your vision and fits well within the overall color scheme. Keep a clean palette and designate a separate mixing area to prevent unintentional color contamination and allow for easy adjustments. Adjust the intensity of a color by shading, accomplished by adding black or tinting, which involves adding white. This technique is valuable for creating shadows and highlights. Consider the lighting conditions where the model will be displayed, as colors may appear differently under varying lighting conditions. Don't hesitate to experiment with color mixing. Creating unique colors can add a personal touch to your miniatures and make them stand out. If you achieve a color you love, record the color formula. This helps in replicating the color for future projects. Remember, practice and experimentation are key when it comes to mixing colors for miniature model painting. Developing a good understanding of color theory and refining your mixing skills will lead to more satisfying and visually appealing results. To highlight the clothes of our miniature models, we use the layering technique. Layering is a widely used painting technique in the world of miniature models. Its primary aim is to achieve smooth transitions between colors, providing a nuanced and realistic finish. In this technique, multiple thin layers of paint are applied, with each layer being allowed to dry before adding the next. This meticulous process results in a gradual buildup of color, offering several advantages in miniature painting. One of the key benefits of layering is its ability to create smooth transitions between different colors or shades. By carefully building up layers, it's possible to achieve a blended and natural appearance on the miniature. Layering is particularly effective for shading and highlighting. As demonstrated here, we can concentrate darker shades in recessed areas for shading and use lighter colors on raised surfaces to create highlights through successive layers. 
Starting from the base color, we progressively add darker or lighter layers to achieve the desired effect. The gradual buildup contributes to a more realistic and visually appealing finish. Another advantage lies in the control it provides over opacity. Thin layers of paint are more translucent, allowing us to control the intensity of colors. This is crucial for achieving subtle variations and avoiding a heavy, opaque look. Details and textures are also enhanced with the layering technique. It allows for precise control over intricate features, such as fabric patterns or the scales on fantasy creatures. However, patience is key when employing layering. Allowing each layer to dry completely before applying the next ensures that colors don't mix, resulting in a clean and defined finish. Remember, layering is a versatile technique that can be adapted to various painting styles and preferences. It encourages experimentation with different color combinations and layering sequences, leading to unique and personalized results. So, as you embark on your miniature painting journey, consider incorporating the layering technique to bring depth and life to your creations. And that wraps up today's adventure. We trust you enjoyed meeting the charming apothecary and hope the idea of using AI to help select a color scheme for your models resonates with you. If you're new to text-to-image generation technology, we hope we sparked your interest in knowing more. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. We'd like to read from you. If you found value in the video, a like and a subscription would mean a lot. By doing so, you'll stay in the loop for our upcoming episodes. Your support is genuinely appreciated. In our next installment of the Alberg Market series, we'll paint some of the objects included in the tools, crates, and barrels stall. Tabletop World announced their 2024 annual painting competition and we'll do our best to complement our cottage diorama before the deadline. Stay tuned for the next leg of our colorful journey. Thanks for joining us today, and as always, keep on painting, and take care!